Alright everybody, we're going to work on putting together the 555 timer chip circuit. Remember this notch right here denotes where pin number 1 is, pin number 2, pin number 3, pin number 4. I'm going to put that diagram up on the monitor for you. Okay? Now, you see I've already got two wires here. That's because I'm going to use my positive as this positive rail up here. My negative is this very bottom rail down here. I've already got an LED and a resistor in line for this. The rest of the stuff over here is spares, so just ignore all that. That's just my storage area for this stuff. Okay, now, first thing we're going to do is we're going to go to pin number one, and we're going to add a jumper to the negative. Okay, now these guys, I'm not using any colors for any specific reason. I'm just grabbing them, okay? you can do that and th these are a jumper kit that you can buy with these things um, I would look at someplace like Harbor Freight Tools or eBay for that matter alright simply because these jumpers can be pricey if you're not careful pin number one is in row eight of these pins so I'm putting that in the negative down there and that into pin number one and pushing it in so I've got pin number one connected to the negative. Now, next step is connect our capacitor. Now this particular capacitor is a 10 microfarad capacitor and it's 6.3 volts. I know this thing's running on 9 volts, but the capacitor never really sees that 9 volts because the chip limits that somewhat. Now, the positive end of the capacitor, the long lead, Okay, this is just like an LED. This long leads a positive end. Has to go towards the chip. The negative end goes to the ground down here. And this connects to pin 2, which is here. So, we are going to push this one in there. And this one in there. So now i got my capacitor wired into the negative. Alright? Next step. And you guys can see this popping in a little box on the side the circuit diagram we're gonna go ahead and connect the resistor and the LED to pin 3 pin 3 is the LED that controls the signal that does the blinking for us it put, produces the pattern that does the blinking okay I've already got the LED connected to the negative this is a short end of the LED here let me get something to point with so you guys don't have my big ass fingers in the way this is the negative end of the LED, this is the positive end, this is the short end, this is the long end. It's connected to an appropriate resistor for the 9 volts that I'm running on my power supply. If I'm running 12 volts, it would be a different resistor here. Okay, this has got to connect to pin 3, which is in row 10 right here. This is pin 3. And I want to connect it to this end of the resistor over here. So I'm using a long jumper, and there's a reason why I put this guy so far over there. It keeps things from being cluttered. You'll see it in a minute because I'm going to end up with leads going all over the place on this. But right now, we have pin 3, which is this guy here, connected to this jumper, which jumps it over to this end of the resistor. The resistor comes back over to this end, and it jumps across to the LED. Now, to that negative ground on my power supply. Now, one thing I want to say real quick is when you're building circuits like this, there's no rhyme or reason why I'm using a big long red one. I could have just done a really short one and jumped. Actually, I could have just used the resistor, jumped over a little bit, and then the LED to jump to the negative. I just wanted the LED off to the side and away from my circuit. All right, the next part, this is where it gets a little tricky. I have to take pin 2 right here and connect it to pin 6 over here. This would not be tricky on a circuit board because I just do a jumper across underneath between here and here real simple this isn't a circuit board I'll show you the finished circuit board I did for the Enterprise NX in a little bit so what I ended up doing was this I took pin 2 and jumped it off over here and I ran a jumper from 6 to here as well okay and the reason for this is I'm going to end up having to run more than one thing off pin 6 in a little bit so <clears throat> I want some room to work with. So I'm going to start here with this one and I'm going to run it off over to here. That gets something from pin 6 off to row 18 of my breadboard. 
So here's pin 6 right here, and that's going off to row 18. Okay? Now I need a jumper to connect pin 2 to row 18. This one fits the bill perfectly in length. So you can see now I've got something going from pin 2 to here. This one connects to this underneath the breadboard. And this one connects to pin 6. And it matches exactly what I got in my diagram. Okay, now I'm going to stick a resistor on R2 between pin 6 and 7. Okay, we're going to call this resistor R2. This resistor controls the blink rate on the LED. Okay. As you change this blink rate, you change the I mean as you change the value of this resistor, you change the blink rate. Ooh, and I just noticed something. That's on pin seven. That is not on pin six. So let me fix that. We don't want that on pin seven. We want that on pin six. We'd have a non-functional circuit right real quick. So that's out. Now it's in pin six. There we go. That's better. Remember the pins go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So this is pin six. All right. Now I'm going to pick up a resistor here. I want it to be one K. K between jumpers six and seven. Now that's real simple to do. I just stick it in like this. There. I got the 1K resistor between jumpers 6 and 7 now. Okay? Now, the next thing I want to do is add a resistor from pin 7 to the positive power supply. Okay? So I want a resistor from pin 7 to the positive power supply. This one right now is 100K. And this one we're going to call R3. R2 and R3 control the blink rate and it controls the spacing of the blinks. And we'll explain that in a little bit. Alright? I'm putting the 100K resistor there. Now, next step, and this is the final step, and we got the circuit built. Nope, not quite the final step. We got two more steps. I need to collect, connect pin 4 to the positive power. I need to connect pin 4 to the positive power. Okay? Now, the positive power is way up here in pin 4 is way down here so I gotta go from here up to here so I need a long jumper I gotta do it multi-steps and I'm gonna do this one in multi-steps just to keep things from being too nutso here so I got some wiring crossing but that's okay because these are all insulated wires and now I can jump this straight to the positive with little or no effort like this if this will cooperate and go in there there it does. Okay? One last step, and we're done. I gotta connect pin 8 to the power. Here's pin 8. Here's the positive on the power. Alright. Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna give this thing some power and see how I did. Okay? And if everything went right, she should be blinking on and off, just like a normal blinker would. Okay, like you saw in an earlier video. Let's see. Give it a second. She's blinking, but something's not right. Okay. You can see it pulsing. So, i got to figure out what's wrong there. Maybe one of my connections isn't right, the capacitor isn't in right, something. Let me try this. Let me check my wiring diagram real quick and make sure everything's wired right. One goes straight to the negative. Pin one is straight to the negative. Okay, the capacitor goes from pin two to the negative and it is pin two to the negative. Okay. Pin three which is this guy here goes to the resistor and stuff. If pin 3 is messed up, this guy would have been burned down immediately. So I know that's okay. Pin 4 doesn't get con pin 4 gets connected directly to power positive and I have that. Okay. P 
pin 2 also gets connected to pin 6. Here's pin 2, and that's on pin 6. I have a resistor from pin 6 and 7. I have a resistor from pin 7 to the positive, and a positive lead from pin 8. Okay, she's wired incorrectly, so there just might be something a little wrong with this resistor. I'm going to pull that resistor. When I pull that resistor, it's going to go steady. Okay? That's resistor 2. What I'm going to do now is I'm hooking up a potentiometer or a rheostat, a variable resistor between pin 6 and 7. All right? Let me get that hooked in there right there. Now, if I start turning this, you can definitely see a difference in the blink rate. Not blinking at all to definitely blinking. What I've got, I think, I know what's wrong. Let me do this. Let me pull this resistor. Put this resistor there. I think I misread my resistors and have them backwards. I'm putting the resistor from pin 7 to the positive power here. There we go. My resistors were backwards. See? I can vary the blink rate with the potentiometer now. It's so fast you can't see it blinking. Everyone see that? I'm just turning the potentiometer to change the blink rate. Now, let me explain the function of these two resistors. Resistor 2 must be much smaller than resistor 3 in the, in the diagram. As long as resistor 2 is much smaller than resistor 3, we get blinking, like we've got here. If I reverse it, however, let me pull the, this guy out of there. I'll put the resistor back in I had. If I reverse it, however, and resistor 3 is smaller than resistor 2, that's when you get the inverse strobe. Okay? So if I pull this resistor here, put a different resistor in there, I'm going to get the inverse strobe. Okay? If I flip these, I'll get the inverse strobe. Now what I have in my hand right here is a 1 meg resistor. And I'm going to flip it. I'm going to put the 1 meg resistor from pin 7 to the power. Let's see what that does. Here's my power lead. Here we go to pin 7. you got to give it a minute. Okay? See, I now made the resistor 3 much larger than resistor 2. And when that happens, I get this effect. When resistor 3 is much larger than resistant resistor 2, we get this effect. If I flip it, or resistor 2 is larger than resistor 3, we just can get blinking. Okay? So there's two of the things you can do with the 555 timer chip. All right? Just two of the things you can do with the 555 timer chip. Setting it up like this, I don't get blinking. I get an inverse strobe effect where it's on for a long time and then goes off. On for a long time and goes off. Kind of like the diagram going below the, showing up on the screen right now. If I take and make this resistance much smaller, Okay, I got them backwards. I pulled the wrong resistor. Let me put that resistor back. If I take resistor 3 and make it much smaller, ooh, I probably just fried everything with that. You know, I didn't. If I take and make resistor 3 much, much smaller, we end up with normal blinking. Okay? And you end up with a wave pattern that looks like this. So there you go. There's two of the three things we can do with the 555 timer chip. And all I'm doing is varying the, the values of these two resistances. One more time, just to make sure everyone gets this. Resistance 2, when it is large, you get a normal blink rate. When resistance 3 is large, you get an inverse strobe effect. Alright, I'll be back when I get the strobe circuit set up. Okay? Just wanted to show you two of the three things that I know how to do with the 555 the 555 timer. All right. Let me know what you think of the new camera angle where I'm across from the work. I bought a new tripod and I was check trying it out today.